Welcome to the fifth video in my CNC series. This will be the overview of all the electronics. I know this video has been delayed by quite a few weeks, but it's because I really struggled with the electronics. As you can see, right now everything is a huge mess, but that's because the first project I'll be doing on the CNC will be a case for all, the, yeah, all these wires. So I will now go through everything about the electronics. I'll go through the CNC controller, all the uh, stepper motor drivers, the power supplies, how to get, uh, how to get the Arduino to uh, control the spindle speed. I'll go through everything. I'll also talk about how you set up the, um, the end stops and everything. There are quite a few things to look out for and if you haven't done anything like this before you're definitely gonna make some mistakes. So the first step in doing the electronics was to choose the CNC controller and after doing some research it was pretty obvious what I would choose. I could either choose Mach 3 which is a paid program that runs on super old junk hardware or I could use Arduino and Goebel 1.1 and run it on super modern hardware. I chose Arduino and Goebel. I decided to go with Universal G Code Sender platform for my as my G Code Sender, and uh, it's working very nicely. It has all the controls you would need. It is now time to connect the stepper motor drivers to the Arduino, and I decided to use an Arduino Mega and of course Goebel Mega. Here you see a diagram from. Goebel Mega Wiki and it shows all the inputs on the Goebel Mega and this shows the inputs on a stepper driver and now I'll now show you a diagram of how it's all connected together. This is the overview of how everything should be connected together. Over here we have the power supply that through that is powering the three stepper drivers through the red and the black wires in a parallel connection. The four stepper motors are connected to A+, plus, A-, minus, and B+, plus, and B-. minus. You can search for how that's done on YouTube. It's so easy. Um, all right, and then you can see over here we have ground that is connected in parallel to all the negative terminals on the stepper drivers. And um, then all the direction pins X, Y, and C go to the according D or plus on the X, Y, and C stepper drivers. The same is true for the step pulse. See the X goes to pulse X and so on. And then the stepper enable, disable on pin 13. These are all the pins on the Arduino Mega. This one is again connected in parallel to all the positive enable plus. So these basically enable the stepper drivers. And uh, this is basically how I have connected it together. And this is what it looks like in real life. It is super messy. The next thing I did was wiring all the limit switches. The limit switches were wired in the normally closed position and this is great because if a wire breaks the system will be able to tell. If they are wired as normally open it won't be able to tell a broken wire. On the picture you see an Arduino Uno but it's exactly the same on Arduino Mega. I wired my limit switches in a pretty irresponsible way. I didn't twist the wires and I didn't use shielded cable. Therefore I got some pretty bad noise issues. Electrical noise is one of the most common issues that CNC routers have. The issue is that all the noise will falsely trigger the limit switches and therefore the, your machine will just stop. I made the filter that you see on the screen right now to remove the noise, but sadly it didn't work perfectly. There were still times that the machine would stop. Goebel recommends another type of noise filter, which uses optocouplers. This is basically the ultimate solution to noise. Therefore, I got three optocouplers from work and a few resistors 
so I could make this circuit. After soldering the circuit together and putting it on the machine, everything has worked flawlessly ever since. If you want to make the same circuit, then visit Goebbels wiki. It's on the page called Wiring Limit Switches. And this is what the circuit looks like. It is the circuit on the brown board. Now I'll show you how I have wired the VFD and the spindle motor. The spindle motor is this one. It is 3000 watts and 3 horsepowers. The VFD is from Huan Yang and it pulls 3000 watts as well. When you are doing something DIY like this and you are working with 220 volts mains power, you need to have all your equipment grounded because otherwise you can get fried. I didn't have ground anywhere in my house, so therefore I first had to get ground installed and then I could proceed. And the same thing applies to the power supplies for the stepper motors. They need to be grounded as well. Now I will show you a diagram of how I've connected everything together. You can also find a link to a very detailed manual for all Huan Yang VFDs in the description. So this shows how all the power wires should be connected together. This is the input on the Huan Yang. This is your metal frame on the CNC, your spindle motor, an optional braking resistor and your 220 volts input. This could also be 120 volts if that's what you have or 400 volts. Um, so this is connected in a bit different ways depending on your VFD. Please look in the manual. In my case, I can connect line and null in any combination to R, S and T and then ground or earth is connected to E over here which is earth and it's also connected to the frame so I basically have wire that is bolted onto the frame. This is because if any one of these wires are damaged so this is being powered with so there's like 220 volts on the frame, then it's immediately gonna go through earth and your HFI relay will shut everything off. The reason you connect ground to the frame is so you don't get shocked if anything goes wrong. So how do you connect the spindle motor? Well, it's very simple actually. You just connect U, V and W via three wires to the spindle motor and they can be connected in any uh, combination you want. If the spindle motor then rotates in the incorrect uh, direction, you can just swap any one of these two and it's gonna go in the opposite direction. And then this gray part is supposed to represent a shielded cable. So a shielded cable is basically like three or four wires that are wrapped in some kind of a metal uh, shell and you take that metal shell and then you ground it. That's because that means that any uh, of the interference that these three wires are gonna induce will go to earth, I think. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So you need ground to be safe and also to reduce all the electrical noise that the spindle motor creates. So up here we have these two rows of input. I will show you those in the next illustration. So now we are pretty close to being done. All we have to do is set up the variable spindle speed on the VFD. There we go. Let's try 15,000. Variable spindle speed means that you can change the spindle speed via G-code commands, so it does everything automatically. This diagram shows how you connect your Arduino Mega to your Huan Yang VFD's inputs. Alright, you need three pins on the Arduino Mega, the spindle direction, pin 5, spindle PWM, pin 7 and ground. Ground is connected to ACM, analog common, and DCM, digital common. It doesn't matter if you use this ACM or this ACM, and the same is for DCM. Spindle PWM is connected to VI, variable input, and spindle direction is connected to FOR, which stands for forward. You can also connect it to REV, reverse, and it will go reverse. Before we are ready, we need to set up 
three settings on the Huanyang VFD. It's these three parameters that has to be set equals to one. Now you need to configure your Gerbil settings. So you want to visit uh, Gerbil 1.1 configuration, and then you want to go through all of these settings and set them up as good of you, as you can. A few things to note is that if you have limit switches that are normally closed, you need to set $5 equals six, sorry, $5 equals one. Also, if you have uh, limit switches, you need to set um, $21 equals one. Um, you set $22 equals one if you want to use a homing cycle. And here you set your spindle RPMs, mine is 18,000 for the max. And this one, steps per millimeter. Please Google how to find steps per millimeter. It has to do with the lead screw that you're using and how much you're micro-stepping with your stepper drivers. This determines uh, what value to plug in right here. XYZ max rate, that's your maximum speed, yada yada yada. I think that's about it. Now I am ready to start machining some stuff and if you have followed along, you should be ready uh, pretty soon as well.